Rookie Racer is the newest coaster to open at Six Flags St. Louis. This coaster was built by Vacoma and is the next generation of the junior coaster model. This is not the same layout as, say, Sprocket Rockets at Six Flags Great America. This coaster was supposed to open this summer, but due to delays in construction, Rookie Racer just now opened on Friday night. Normally, I would not review a coaster meant for younger people in a park before reviewing several adult coasters in the same park, but this is an exception to that. If you saw my last construction update for this ride, then you know I said that I would do a separate video about my thoughts on this coaster as soon as I got on it. I got multiple rides on it over opening weekend, and I can safely say that this coaster is a smash hit for Six Flags St. Louis. So I'll be giving my thoughts on Rookie Racer in today's video. This coaster has a max height of 41 feet, making it the second smallest coaster at Six Flags St. Louis behind River King Mine Train. That coaster stands just 32 feet tall, and it kind of surprises me that Rookie Racer is taller. We don't know an exact drop height for Rookie Racer, but we do know that it reaches a top speed of 27 miles an hour, and it covers 843 feet of track. These stats aren't anything to go nuts over, but then again, this coaster wasn't meant to have impressive stats. You can find this coaster towards the back of the park in the Britannia section. Rookie Racer's entrance is just behind Supergirl Skyflyer and to the left of the boss's entrance. This coaster looks great as you approach it, and the color scheme really catches your attention. You can also get some great views of this ride from the boss's queue line, given its close proximity to Rookie Racer. When you get in line for Rookie Racer, there are a few things to note. First off, there is some cue audio of what sounds like a conversation among what seem to be a few members of a pit crew, and you hear about how your vehicle is designed to handle a shorter track layout like this. The faint sounds of race cars in the background can be heard as well. I wasn't expecting this cue audio at all, and it reminded me of the cue audio for another new for 2023 Vacoma coaster, Big Bear Mountain at Dollywood. I'm going to be drawing a few comparisons between that and Rookie Racer for this review. Second, I noticed that the line wasn't too long. The longest I ever waited for it was 15 minutes. Now, the ride has only been open for a few days at this point, so I imagine once peak Fright Fest season comes around, which is like mid-October, I imagine the line will be a lot longer than 15 minutes, and I can easily see being 45 minutes to an hour at least. Even if the line does get long, I noticed that the ride crew was doing a fantastic job sending the trains really quick. The dispatch times were maybe 45 seconds max, so this line should move very quickly. If you do have to wait a while, the coaster runs right next to and over the queue line, which provides for some more cool photo ops. Once you get into the station, there's a chance you'll be assigned a row. I've technically gotten 10 laps on it since I rode 5 separate times, and the train was sent around twice each time, which is nice. I've only been assigned a row once. I've only ridden this in the front and the back, so I haven't done any of the rows in between. I think the back row is the best row by a slight margin. Once it's time to board, you'll enter Rookie Racer's race car style train. This train looks incredible. On a clear sunny day, the red paint scheme on the train really pops against the blue sky. The only restraint you have is the lap bar, and it's the same as the ones you'll find on Big Bear Mountain. These restraints are very comfortable, and they leave you feeling very open. Once you depart the station, you make a left turn and then ascend up the 41 foot tall lift hill. Some speakers on the lift hill play some sounds of race cars revving their engines along with the countdown until the race begins. When these sounds started to play on my first ride on Rookie Racer, which I was on the first public train of this coaster, I was really surprised by this because I wasn't expecting it at all. Once at the top of the lift hill, the race begins and Rookie Racer heads down the first drop. This drop is the main reason why I think the back is slightly better than the front, as there was actually a little bit of air time on it. It wasn't much, but it exceeded my expectations. The bottom of the first drop has some decent positives too. The race car sounds get significantly louder as the train enters a wide turn. There weren't any notable forces here, but the sense of speed was decent up front. Rookie Racer then makes an S spin, which leads into the ride's downwards helix. Both the front and back get some weaker positives going through this helix, and in the back it gets some extra pull to it. The train then goes over a gradual S hill, which doesn't give any airtime due to the lack in elevation, but the last few turns that follow get some solid laterals. The last turn in particular stands out here. Once the ride re-enters the station, you'll probably get sent around again, meaning you'll get to experience the full layout a second time. After the second lap, Rookie Racer crosses the finish line, ending the ride. You're then told to grab your gear and go celebrate, which I think is a really cool touch. Before I give it a final score, here are a few other things I have to say about this ride. First off, it's very smooth, as a new coaster should be. I was unsure what the smoothest coaster at Six Flags St. Louis was before I rode Rookie Racer, but I knew it was between Batman, Mr. Freeze, or Pandemonium. After riding all 10 coasters in the park on Saturday, I thought this coaster was by far the smoothest of them all. I also thought the same thing about, you guessed it, Big Bear Mountain. Second, I briefly mentioned how you could hear the sounds of race cars on the lift hill, but you could also hear it during the rest of the ride, which added to the experience. There are other speakers near the ride's helix and also near the station, so the racing sounds never die down. This coaster is also top two for best themed coasters at Six Flags St. Louis alongside Mr. Freeze, because the amount of detail put into this coaster in terms of theming was a lot more than the detail put into several other coasters at this park. Now let's give Rookie Racer a score out of 10. In terms of how this coaster in general is, I decided to give it a 5 out of 10. In terms of coasters that are meant for kids, I would say Rookie Racer gets a 9.5. This coaster does what it sets out to do very well. Thanks to a glossy smooth ride experience that isn't overly intense and the solid theming throughout, I think this is a coaster that anyone should be able to ride and have fun on. The only knock on this coaster is that the track layout itself isn't that long, but at least you go around twice almost every time to compensate. I've ridden 293 coasters, and while Rookie Racer only ranks at number 228, I had a lot more fun on it than I was expecting. Six Flags St. Louis desperately needed a coaster meant for kids since River King Mine Train and Pandemonium aren't true kid coasters. Boomerang was the most recent coaster to open in Six Flags St. Louis before Rookie Racer, and that was back in 2013. While it took 10 years between coasters, I'd honestly say it was worth a wait given how much fun I had on it. Rookie Racer does a great job filling in the gap of having a true kid coaster. Now I'm hoping for this park's next coaster to be an RMC Raptor that comes in less than 10 years from now, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. Those are just my thoughts on Rookie Racer. I would ask what you think of this 
this coaster, but since it opened less than a week ago, I'm sure that hardly anyone watching this has ridden it yet. If you have ridden it over the first few days it's been open, definitely let me know what you thought about this coaster. If you have not ridden this coaster yet, let me know how you think it looks compared to other kid coasters. Post any thoughts you have about either of those topics in the comment section. Also, be sure to let me know what coaster you want to see in review, and I'll see if I can do it. Of course, before you click off this video, please be sure to leave a like if you haven't done so already. Be sure to comment what you enjoyed about this video, and be sure to share it with someone else you may know. If you're new to the channel like we saw, please consider subscribing for more content like this. I'd appreciate you subscribing and turning the bell on so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I also have an Instagram account for the pictures I take whenever I visit a park, so be sure to check me out there as well via the link in the description. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you later.